there are two types of confidence intervals we're going to study this semester. The first type is going to <clears throat> revolve around proportions or percentages. In 7.2, we're going to learn about confidence intervals regarding means or averages. Like I said in the introductory video, always remember the purpose of a confidence interval is to capture some true amount in a population. So in 7.1, this amount we're talking about is a true proportion or a true percentage. So let's get some vocabulary and symbols down. When we talk about the true proportion, I'm talking about the true population proportion. And the symbol we give for that is just the letter P. But we know we work mostly with samples and we have something called a sample proportion, which is p hat. So it's important that we make a distinction between the word population versus sample proportion and each symbol represents those. So what is it we're interested in? Let's say I want to know what proportion of all Butte College students will eat ice cream this weekend. That's the true proportion, the population proportion. Or what percentage of Adult Americans will be infected, infected with the coronavirus. So proportions, percentages, that's what we're after. You may remember in the introductory video, I gave a confidence interval that looked like this, 35 comma 55. So as proportions, they have the decimals. If I want to call that as if those are percentages, I would call that 35% to 55%. And so what is this telling me? If we were handed this confidence interval, what we're saying is that we think the population proportion, or sometimes I like to throw in the word percentage when writing a sentence, it sounds better. We think the population percentage is between 35% and 55%. We can't get our hands on an entire population. That's why we need a range of values we think it's in between. But where did we get this? Well, we know that this conference interval was built around a point estimate, 45% and a margin of error of 10%. 45 minus 10 is 35, 45 plus 10 is 55. So we called this the point estimate in the last video, but now we can call it the sample proportion, p hat. And my margin of error, we're going to give it just the letter, capital letter E to stand for error. Okay. So, one thing you may see in your homework is, with this last example, we may say something like, what is between 35 and 55 percent? If we had an empty spot that says something is sandwiched in between 35 and 55 percent, what is that? It's kind of a trick question. You might think it's a number. You might even think, oh, is it 45, the number in the middle? Nope. It's just the symbol P. The population proportion is what we think is between 35 and 55 percent. All right, so let's try another example. If we saw 0.6 comma, point eight, eight, eight. First of all, what is this telling me? What we can say is that we think the population proportion, P, is between 
0.666 and 0.888. That's what ultimately matters here. So what does this interval tell me is we think the population proportion is captured between those two numbers. So let's break this down. What was the sample proportion that gave us this? And the sample proportion is always the number exactly in between those two. If you took the average of 666 with 888, you would get 0.777, along with the margin of error of 0.111. Again, the structure of a confidence interval looks like p hat plus or minus e. Now, <clears throat> let's move into where do we get these numbers. I keep giving you final examples. Here's one thing we need to start recognizing is you'll be given a sample size. Let's say 800 people were surveyed and of them let's say 336 said yes to some survey question. I want to know what proportion of people said yes. This is my sample proportion. 336 divided by 800, grab your calculator, and you'll get 0 0.42. That p hat is my sample proportion. Quick follow-up. Sometimes we use the letter Q in certain calculations. There is something called a Q hat you'll want to know about. And again, P and Q are always complements. So if you're told P hat is 42%, then Q hat would be 0.58 or 58%. In part two of my confidence intervals related to proportions, we're actually going to learn how to get the margin of error. And we're going to let our calculator do some of the heavy hitting on that. But for now, this should get you through the first half of the assignment from 7.1.